So, hello YouTubers, gold lovers, scrappers, welcome back to my channel, Mike here. Uh, remember this, my homemade flail mill? Well, um, you know, the first video I put out in this, it hasn't gone live yet. So if you guys have participated in the contest and come up with a name for my Franken creation here, um, I don't know what it is yet, so <laughs> I guess we'll find out. But anyway, I am doing some repairs and some tweaks on it, trying to make it more robust because it didn't last very long when I fired it up for the first time on camera and pulverized some, uh, some quartz rock in it. Did manage to get some gold out of that quartz rock because it did pulverize it to powder, but eventually it started pulverizing itself. So I'm over here reworking the hammers and I'll show you what I'm doing over there. So I'm working on redoing the hammers in my homemade flail mill and they're going to be pretty much the same as the last set of hammers except I've scaled them up. These are 3 eighths instead of quarter inch. So these should be more robust and as well as welding it on the back here where the nuts are so they can't come loose. I'm also going to put a nice big bead in here and in here in these areas that shattered before to help reinforce them. So we'll see how that does. Yeah, I actually wanted to use larger cable clamps for my hammers when I was at the store, but they didn't have any. Any bigger than the quarter inch. So I decided, well, I'll go with the quarter inch. Well, yesterday I went to my happy place, Ace Hardware, and of course they've got every size of these under the sun. So I got some 3 8 So I will get four of these welded up and reinstall the flails and hammers inside the uh, mill and we'll see how it goes. Alrighty, there we go. I just got to get my welder out. Um, weld them down here so that the nuts can't come loose. Put beads in the sides to reinforce them up in here where this starts shattering. And then um, I think I'll, I'll, I'll grind down the, the little bit of bolt sticking out so that they don't rub against the side of the mill. And then we should be ready. i just reinstall them and do another test. So, you ready for another test soon? And I have a backup plan in case these hammers don't work too. Check this out. Yeah, look at that. I really like these because there's a lot more mass that's swinging around there at the end of the chain. But uh, this would probably put a wicked hurting on some rocks too. So I can make up four of these if uh, turns out these don't work. But I'm going to try these first. Uh, I've got some new hammers in there. Uh, I'm going to give them a try, see if it works. Let me show you. Let me show you what they look like installed. So let me give you a close up look here. And again, I have not done anything but power this up briefly to make sure nothing flies apart. It's a little out of balance, but you know, you're going to get the first test run you're going to see that first test run so here's here's a typical hammer right here um welded on the bow welded across the nuts on the bottom and then ground down so it doesn't rub on the inside okay uh welded over here to reinforce it welded over here to reinforce it they're all like that so these are three eighths the previous ones were quarter inch so 50% larger, so 50% larger and well reinforced. So hopefully these will work better and last longer. I guess we'll see. Let me put the cover on it and we'll feed a few rocks in and see what happens. Let me get this cover on good and tight. And um, in case these hammers don't work, I do have a backup plan with those, those nuts on those quick links. So we can try those next if these hammers don't last. And some of you may be thinking, Mike, why don't you just use D-ring hammers like the Mighty Mill does? And believe me, I have thought of that. And that may be a possibility for the future. The problem with the D-rings in uh, this thing, I actually started designing and building this before I had the Mighty Mill. So I didn't realize how well the D-ring hammers worked at the time. and. Um, well, the D-rings are a little big. They may not work in here without some modification. So I'm going to try some other things first before um, I would have to uh, 
maybe get into some serious modifications to use the D-rings. So we'll try my other brainstorms here and see if they work out at all. And if they don't, well, I just have to modify it and maybe try the D-rings. Or something else. Okay. I would say that's on there good and tight. Let's find some rocks to crush. Get my vacuum cleaner out and get it hooked up. Okay, time for another test. It's always a little bit scary firing this thing up. Still don't have the power switch on it. I'm too busy making new hammers for it. I need to do that at some point. Okay, now this is a little out of balance. Gonna make some noise. I've got another bag of rocks over here. Um, the same stuff I was feeding through it last time, so we'll feed some more of this in. Let me get the vacuum going. Seem to work okay. Let's see how much stuff we've got in the vacuum down here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know if that's showing up. We got a lot of dust in the vacuum cleaner. So it seems to be working pretty good. Maybe those new hammers of mine are gonna hold up for a while. I've got a lot of fine stuff in here. I need to find a way to figure out how to feed it in so it can be converted into dust. Let me think about that for a second. We'll be back. Well, it definitely performed better than last time. And I'll tell you what, this one horsepower motor over here, it's not even warm. I was thinking it was going to be underpowered and struggling, but no. It seems to be working good. We're powering this thing. Let me get this bucket underneath here to catch anything that comes out. There we go. Eh, there's not too much in here. There's a little bit of stuff plugging up the screen. A few big chunks plugging it up. Not too bad. You got most everything. There's a few chunks in here. I'll tell you what, I'll get a paintbrush and I will brush this out into the bucket and we'll, we'll pan all this stuff out. Let me look at the hammers. I'll zoom in so you can get a look at the hammers too. See what if anything I've done to them. So last time the front hammer seemed to take the front of it. Let's see. That's the leading edge right there. It's just got some pitting in it. So this thing rotates around like this. Uh, yeah, that one looks okay. See the one way in the back? It looks fine. The other middle one? They all look fine. They all look fine. There aren't any big balls of metal in here. So I guess what I heard rattling around in here were these little pieces of rock that weren't getting fully pulverized. Let me. rest of this out here in the bucket. All right. 
Good job. Good job. And uh, we'll take this stuff over and pan it out. See what we got. Oh, and as I'm putting this thing back together after that run, I had a thought about why I had so much trouble getting the cover off in the last video after that test run. Things need to be done in a certain sequence, I think. I think what I might have done was mistakenly tighten down the set screws on the shaft on the bearing here before I tightened these wing nuts down with my handy dandy wing nut wrench here. So may have galled the shaft a little bit because as I tighten these down the front plate moves in so and these these can exert a lot of pressure as they tighten down. So I think that was it. So I gotta do things in the proper order. I need to uh, tighten down all four wing nuts good, then tighten down the set screws in the bearing, and then when I take it apart, I need to take the set screws in the bearing up, loosen them up first, then take the wing nuts off, and that prevents me from galling the shaft, and then it slides in and out of the bearing really easily. Simple, easy peasy. Just got to do things in the right order. Okay, let's head over to the panning table and pan that stuff out. Alrighty, I guess I'm ready to pan this stuff out. I got my loop, my stuffer bottle, got some jet drive to put in the water, bust up the surface tension on the water, my favorite pan, got the stuff that, uh, yeah, I guess we'll do it all. There's not that much there. I was going to do it in halves, but there's really not that much material there, so we'll do it all at once. disarrange so you can see what I'm doing. All right. <clears throat> so this material, oh yeah, the mill does a good job on it. Look, it's 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 hydrophobic. It's so finely ground up. But the jet dryer will help with that. But this material came from a uh, an exposed quartz vein on the side of a mountain. I found it while I was uh, rock hounding out in Wyoming and uh, didn't really have sampling stuff with me at the time so you know a few months ago wife and I went back and uh, took our rock hammers and a bunch of sample bags and we went back there and we sampled that uh, that quartz vein where it was outcropping on the side of that mountain. I'll put a link to the the video where we sampled it in the upper right and um, this material has starred in several videos so far and I find gold in it every time so there's a little bit of gold there so we need to go back there and get more of that material actually you know if I find a particularly rich pocket <laughs> I need to think about actually filing a mining claim out there let's see if it's actually worth it though so far we've just found little bits of gold but I haven't processed much material either Plus, there's lots of that vein we haven't sampled yet. It may be richer in other places. And I saw a lot of float on the side of the mountain above that vein. So there's probably at least one or two more veins higher up that we haven't even looked at yet. But, ooh, climbing up that scree slope was difficult. Getting up to the veins we sampled was hard enough. Getting higher up the mountain, ooh, that's a little scary. Looks like I can find an easier way up than up that scree slope. <clears throat> but we'll pan this out and see what we can find. I would say that my uh, improvised and so far unnamed mill there does at least as good a job as the Mighty Mill. Not as portable as the Mighty Mill, but that's okay. It, it can do large quantities. Yeah, and just like the Mighty Mill, we got some got some bigger chunks left over in here. If I just wanted the finer material, which is probably where the gold is, I could always screen it and put the uh, put the chunky stuff back through again. That looks pretty much like just barren quartz, though. That yeah, might be sulfides. 
it's not enough to worry about. This is a this is a test. Not gonna worry too much about it. Oh yeah, there's some more chunkies there. Oh, that's some big chunks. Yeah, it's got a lot of sulfides in it. But again, there's really not enough here to worry about. I'm sure what did get pulverized will give me some idea how much gold there is in this particular vein. This is the smaller vein of the two we sampled. This was the one slightly higher up. My wife Leslie did most of the sampling on that vein. I sampled the, the bigger vein a little below it. And we found a little bit of gold in both veins, but I think the one my wife sampled actually has a little bit more. We're getting down to it now. Looks like got a lot of sulfides in there. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me see if I can clean this up a little bit and see what we've got here. See if we got any gold. A little free gold's always nice. Oh, you know what else we got? Let me find my mining magnet. Alright, yeah. We got a little bit of steel in here from the mill, which, you know, is not unexpected. Let me get that out of there. Okay. Not as bad as last time. Last time the mill pretty much self-destructed on me and this the pan was just absolutely full of chunks of steel. Now we just got some filings in there, which is absolutely normal. I mean even the mighty mill does that. The the machine's going to slowly self-destruct as it as it runs. Those hammers, those brand new hammers I put in there will someday need to be replaced, I am sure. What is that? What is that? I gotta get my loop. What is that? Not sure it's gold, but I'm not sure what it is either. Well, that's a chunk of something. That's a funky, funny looking rock, I guess. Let me see here. There's a lot of sulfides in here. I think I see a little bit of gold. Let me clean it up a little bit more. For this stuff. Maybe we got a little bit of black sand in there too. Along with sulfide. Oh yeah, there's gold in there. Oh yeah. I think every 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 bit of this this particular vein I've processed and panned out, I've seen a little bit of gold in it. So that vein has some gold. That's nice. Whether I'll be able to get a picture of it for you, well, that's uh, iffy. Well, maybe, maybe. All right, I'll take it out in the sun and see if I can get a picture of that with the. Uh, macro function on my phone. That might actually show up this time pretty well. We'll see. Okay, the bulk of this stuff is sulfides, metal sulfides, but up along that rim right there, there's some gold. I see multiple pieces of gold up in there. There's some right about in the middle of the field of view right there. But yeah, multiple multiple flecks of gold up there. They really stand out from the sulfides in this batch. Sometimes they blend in good. But in this batch they're standing out a little better. I hope you can see them too. 
They are small. They are hard to spot, but they're there. Cool. All right, found a little more gold in this stuff. Let me uh, suck it up into my snuffer bottle here, along with those sulfides down there, which sooner or later, someday, get around to smelting. Make sure I got all the good stuff here. Tap the heavies to the top of the pan here. Top, top. By my, uh, from my view, anyway. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm thinking my, uh, my homemade flail mill over there is working pretty good at the moment. Let's go check it out again. Talk about it a little more. Well, all right. I think I've got something finally here that works. I mean, it's still got a few quirks, um, but it seems to be working. It handled all that stuff without any trouble. And that's good, because I've still got a lot of rock to process. Um, you know, the Mighty Mill, I love it, but it's really made for sampling, not for production. So I've sampled a lot of this stuff, and I know there's gold in it, but I've got just, you know, a literal crap ton of it over here that needs to be run through a mill and pulverized so I can pan the gold out of it. So now I've got a production mill. I don't have to worry about, you know, voiding the warranty on the Mighty Mill by using it for production and wearing it out quickly. I can use this for production. Anything that breaks on it, I can fix or replace because, hey, I designed and built it. It's all me, okay? I can fix it no matter what goes wrong with it. So, uh, yeah, I think in future videos you're going to see me feeding large quantities of very hard quartz rock through this thing, getting it pulverized, and panning the gold out of it. So I hope you'll be interested in those videos, and I hope you'll subscribe to see them when they come out in hopefully the not too distant future. And press that little bell icon that YouTube wants you to press to be notified when new videos come out. I don't know why it's not automatic when you subscribe, but it's not. If you subscribe, you have to press that little bell icon to get be notified when I release a new video. As a subscriber, you will be notified, but you gotta press that darn button. So watch for those future videos. Check out my second channel, ElectroGeek64. There's good stuff going on over there. New content coming out fairly regularly there now. Uh, the channel's growing a lot. Like, comment, subscribe check it out. And I will see you in the next video here. Thanks for watching this one. Bye.